Straight out to Greg Paul, reporter, KFYI. Greg, what do we know about reports a message scrawled inside Isabel's closet in her bedroom? Nancy, it really brings another mysterious element to this case. What we are hearing is that possible message from Isabel, as you said, was found inside the closet on the wall. But when police were asked about it, you just saw it. Uh, the, the Sergeant Hawk, she wouldn't even confirm it. They wouldn't talk about it. They don't want to discuss it to protect the investigation. But it is an interesting twist to this story. Joining me right now is close friend of the Sellis family, Joe Vega, who is a friend of Isabel's father and mother. Joe, did you have any idea that CPS, Child Protective Services, have been in the Sellis home already? No, today was the first I've heard of it. Now, Joe, you believe that the Celeses are your friends and that Sergio Celes is a very close friend, do you not? Yes. And up until this point, you have been unwavering. You have supported him fully. Now that you know Child Protective Services has already been called to the home before this, does that change your opinion in any way? Uh, no, it doesn't. I don't know why. Child Protective Services was called. Um, could be a number of reasons. Um, who knows who called? Could be a neighbor. When you say, um, when you, you know, say, we, we don't Joe, know, we, don't, we don't know the situation, but I do know. But I do know the family. When you say Child Protective Services could have been called for a number of reasons, what are the reasons with which you are familiar that Child Protective Services are called into a home? Well, yeah, mainly for abuse, things like that, but um, we don't know who called. What if it's a neighbor that where the kids were playing outside too loud and, and the neighbor is called for something like that? You know, I don't, I don't have the facts. I just heard about this today. I don't have the facts, um, but I do know the family, and I know how close the family is. So um, until I hear something definitive on why CPS was called, my, uh, my feelings of the family do not change. Mr. Vega, have you been in the family home before? No, I have not. What did Mr. Sellis, Sergio Sellis, say to you regarding his phone lines being monitored? Um, he didn't say anything to me. I spoke with him the other night to let him know how his son did at our Little League game. And all he had told me was, you know, I'm sorry, I can't talk that long. I need to get off the phone. And, and I didn't ask him why, you know, I'm not going to grill my friend. He's going through enough right now. Uh, I'm not going to grill him it, it, over anything like that. Didn't he say you know, to you, to Mr. To Mr. Vega, that he couldn't talk for long, that his calls, his phones were being monitored? He did not tell me his phones were being monitored. He told me he could not talk that long, that he had to get off the phone. Yes, he did not tell me his phones were being monitored. Um, and I did not ask. Like I said, I'm not going to grill my friend. He's going through enough. Um, I just told him that I would probably call him back later in the week after our next game to let him know how his son is playing. He wants to know how his son is playing, so I told him I would let him know. Greg Oberzat, what do we know about Sergio Celis' phones being monitored? Uh, well, Nancy, all we know is that the other night when Mr. Vega did speak to Sergio, he did say um, that, you know, he had to keep it short. He did relay a message f uh, to Joe for his son, but other than that, he just had to keep it short. With me is Greg Overzat, our producer there in the field of the Tucson Police Station. Along with him is Joe Vega, a very close friend of the Sellis family. Greg Overzat, do you recall speaking with Joe Vega yesterday and sending me a summary of that phone conversation around 5 p.m. your time? Yes, no. Yes, I do. Okay. Do you recall writing? Joe Vega says that Sella says his calls are being monitored and he has to keep his calls short. I am quoting. Do you recall making that statement, Greg? Yes. Have I refreshed your recollection? 
You have, and Mr. Vega and I have discussed it to clarify, and we believe that it is actually Joe Vega right here who believes that the calls are being monitored. The words may not have explicitly come out of Sergio's mouth to him, but the understanding was that the reasoning for his short phone calls was the presumption that they could be monitored. I'm glad you cleared that up, Greg Oberzat. Thank you very much. So, Mr. So, Mr. Vega, why did you get the impression that Celis' phone calls, Daddy's calls, are being monitored by police? Oh, I don't know who they're being mon monitored by or if they're being monitored. He never used the word monitor with me. My but assumption was because he had to get off the phone quickly, that my assumption was because he had to get off the phone quickly, that they were probably being monitored. That's my assumption. I did not relay that to him in any way. He did not use the word monitored in any way. That was my own assumption.